Odyssey begins when we place a coin in the slot. In this case, it will be a quarter. The coin then passes through this triple chute, quarter, dime, and nickel, and will fall through this hole, and falls into this funnel, and then is directed down into what is called the slug rejector. This will feel and weigh the coin and determine if the diameter, thickness, mass, uh, and non-magnetic or magnetic properties are appropriate. Uh, if it is appropriate, it will pass the coin on down through this chute into the coin grinder. If it finds the coin to be somehow defective, it sends it through this front chute, through this passage, and the speaker baffle down into this uh, scoop and the rejected coin is then uh, dropped into this coin return cup at the bottom left of the front door of the jukebox. When the slug rejector sends the coins down to the coin grinder it has separated them based on denomination and sends the nickel, dime, and the quarter into separate slots on the top of the coin grinder. Each of these slots will go down to a neoprene rubber wheel that's in the center of this and be sent in a rotational path. The nickel will activate one electrical switch. The dime will activate two. The quarter will activate five. For each switch activation from the coin, there is a uh, like it looks like a gear in here. It's a credit wheel and it will be advanced one notch or one tooth for each uh, nickel value that came into the coin grinder. I put a quarter in. The quarter will come down, make the rotational path, click five switches, and then advance the credit wheel five teeth. So as we stand right now, the credit wheel in this coin grinder has five teeth advanced from its rest point. We can listen to the coin grinder as it does this. You heard five clicks, you also heard the motor running in the coin grinder, and you heard the coin fall down into the cash box. After it makes its trip around the neoprene wheel, that's its ultimate fate, is to be dropped in the cash box. So we now have five credits on our credit wheel in our coin grinder. The credits on the credit wheel do two things. Number one, they illuminate the make selection light at the front of the jukebox. It stays lit as long as you have credits. Uh, it also activates the switches behind these buttons. These are the switches. They are now activated and ready for someone to push in the button and tell the jukebox which song to play. Wurlitzer jukeboxes of this vintage have 24 buttons, 24 switches, and 24 records in the record stack. It only plays the tops of the records, so you have a total of 24 selections. Each time a customer presses a button, it will make changes occur here in the selector drum. If you notice there is an array around here, like almost like a Gatling gun or a radial aircraft engine, of coils. There's, there's 24 of these coils, one for each selection. Let's say this is the coil for uh, record number one. If somebody pushes the number one button, this coil will be energized it will pull a metal piece back and allow a rod to protrude back from this and stay there. It, in other words, uh, that rod, uh, if I press number one button, this activates the number one rod. There will be a rod sticking out the back of this unit uh, about a quarter of an inch, uh, whereas all the other rods are held back. Say then if I press number two selection, then this coil would be energized and the number two rod would go back. At this point then, all uh, of 22 rods are held back 
and two of them have been released to protrude out the back of the unit. Also when the rods protrude they pull this central plate into contact with this other plate and they energize this switch. This switch when it is on, this is actually the master controller to the uh, motor of the jukebox. This switch, if you see that's the adjustment to know that the plate has actually moved. As long as the switch is on, the jukebox will play, continue to search out and play records. So this is the master switch. Okay, I'm going to show this in action in just a second. We can actually watch this process in action. I'm going to reach around the front and push one of the selector buttons. Watch what happens to the plate when I do this. Notice that it pulled forward. When it pulled forward, it also pulled on this rod, which closed that switch and activated it, which turns on the jukebox. What it says is, somebody has just made a selection. Go find what rod has been pushed out the back uh, and play that record. After you played that record, then reset that button so that the disc returns to center and the switch goes to off. Now the jukebox is at rest and waiting for someone to push another button. Something else occurs in the coin grinder. Every time someone pushes a button and makes a selection, the credit wheel will return back one notch. So that when it's finally returned five notches uh, for the quarter that I put in, and somebody's made five selections, the credit wheel is at zero, and it tells the jukebox, after you played this last record, we're done until someone else puts another coin in the slot. Once the credit wheel in the coin grinder reaches zero, uh, it turns off the make selection light to tell the customers no more selections until you put in more money. Well, that brings us to the end of the part one video of uh, the function of the Wurlitzer 1015 jukebox. I hope it all made sense. Uh, next, in part two, we will take a look at how the jukebox mechanism is going to respond to the selections that were made on this drum, how it will find the right record and play it. So please uh, take a look at a part two video when you get a chance. I really appreciate your time and interest and I hope that this was uh, informative and entertaining. Thank you.